Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video, I'm gonna go over nitric acid production. Now nitric acid alongside with sulfuric acid are two of the most important liquids in this mod, especially when it comes to processing bedrock ores. And not only bedrock ore, nitric acid is also used in the electrolysis machine for processing crystals. So yeah, nitric acid is pretty easy to produce and in this video, I'm going to show you this layout on how you can do it. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so here's a flowchart of the whole thing. In order to get nitre, we need cobblestone which comes from an igneous extruder. Cobblestone goes in a pulverizer, gets converted into sand. Sand goes in a cyclic assembler, gets converted into sandstone. And sandstone then goes into another pulverizer and gets converted into sand and nitre. The percentage chance of getting nitre can be increased using augments, which is what we are gonna do. Now nitre then goes in an industrial liquefaction machine where it gets converted into nitric acid. So basically that is what we are going to do. We are going to use 8 industrial liquefaction machines to produce a nitric acid. Now I have marked out one chunk and replaced the borders with the hazard concrete. And now we can start placing the industrial liquefaction machine. So leaving one block on the back like this, place down two machines touching each other. Then in the middle we leave two blocks and place down two more machines like this. So there's a row of four and another row of four. So we have total eight machines. Now we place down a pulverizer and on top of that a cyclic assembler and then another pulverizer leaving one block gap from the machine. And we do that four times like this. So each of this setup will support two liquefaction machines. Now it's time to place down all of the augments and these are important. So I'm going to hover my mouse over each of them so you know the augments that I'm going to use. So we have augments for speed, increasing the chance of secondary output and nullification. So let's start with the topmost pulverizer which will convert stone into sand. Remove the redstone augment, placing down a nullification augment so that it can get rid of all of the gravel and then place down three speed upgrades or three speed augments. And we do that on all of the top pulverizers. Next up for the cyclic assembler, it's pretty simple. This one is only going to take three speed upgrades, which is kind of an overkill, but then again, we are in creative, so yeah. And for the final pulverizer, which is going to convert all of the sandstone back into sand and nitre, Remove the redstone upgrade and also the integrated servo mechanism. And now we place down two speed upgrades, level one and two, and three upgrades for increasing the secondary output chance. So that's three level of secondary sieve along with two levels of speed. And we repeat this process in all of the remaining pulverizers. So that's done and once again, just to show a recap, nullification along with three speed upgrades for the very first pulverizer, three speed upgrades for the assembler, and finally, two speed upgrades along with three secondary upgrades. Next up to set up the cyclic assembler, place down an empty schematic and set the recipe to sandstone. And don't forget to click the arrow button, the green arrow like this, in order to set this recipe to the schematic. And there we go. So that's all of the cyclic assembler set. And now all that we need to do is actually configure the sides. So the very top assembler will take input from the right and output will be on the bottom. Now we don't need to worry about the secondary output cause it is going to get nullified. So the primary output is going to go on the bottom directly into the cyclic assembler. Now the cyclic assembler is going to take input from the top output will be on the bottom and it will also take sand from the below pulverizer so that's why it has a secondary input on the right hand side and the third pulverizer will input on the top and now the secondary output which is nitre will be on the left hand side where the liquefaction machines are and primary output sand will be on the right hand side so we can loop the sand back into the cyclic assembler like this so here i'm going to place down an item duct and connecting the two liquefaction machines with the last pulverizer, I'm going to place down item ducts like this. And there we go. And don't forget to place the servo. And that's completed. So in a similar 
where you need to complete this process for all of the remaining setup and by the way when you are placing down pipe side by side and you need to disconnect them uh, you can use the crescent hammer so i'm going to set up all of the machines like this and once it's done it should look something like this so that's four set of machines done now to get power into all of these i'm going to use the cryo stabilized flux ducts and extending them in the middle and connecting them on the back like this now this connection like you can do however you would like to do it and in order to make it look good i'm going to place some covers so that's done and now in order to connect both of these flux ducts i'm going to place down an he 2 rf converter and on top of this we have an energy storage block along with an electricity pole now for now i'm just going to power all of the thermal machines and not the liquefaction machines so that they have a chance of filling up so on top of the electric pole placed down the igneous extruder it's funny how this works but yeah you can place it down like this and there is an output on both the left and the right hand side and now we can connect the stone cobblestone lines from the igneous extruder going into both of the top pulverizers and get rid of the unnecessary connection using the crescent hammer so with that done we can actually test this out so placing down lava and water in the machine oh and by the way in the igneous extruder don't forget to place down the upgrades so that we can produce 64 stones 64 cobblestones per operation and once it starts going then yeah the pulverizers will fill up eventually and they will start depositing nitre in the liquefaction machine the one closest will receive the nitre first now I am going to let these machines fill up and meanwhile we can connect all of the pipes and the connections the power connections for the liquefaction machine so i'm going to pipe all of this out from the back side where we left a one block gap in the starting and set all of these pipes to nitric acid and like you can place down a gauge in order to see the rate of production so with that placed now all that's left is to place down the connectors and connect them to the electricity pole you can also place down a switch if you want to control the liquefaction machines so with that done we can now place the speed level 3 upgrade in each of the liquefactor and that will speed it up and will give us a decent enough rate of production now it's not constant but you will still fill up tanks at a pretty good speed and by the way you cannot use normal tanks you will either need to use the magnetic tanks or the biggest tanks because nitric acid will just destroy all of the normal tanks so now as you can see we are slowly but steadily filling up our nitric acid supplies and if you let it run for a long enough time then yes you will actually gather a decent amount of nitric acid in this manner and as for the power it's only consuming 340,000 hg per second so yeah that's pretty good actually and yeah that was actually the build i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this and if you have any thoughts regarding this video then make sure to let me know in the comment section down below peace out my dudes stay safe